I thought I'd do a quick video of a before restoration on a long case clock I recently acquired. Um, I've got a bad back at the minute so this project will be on hold for a few weeks until my back is um, able to lift heavy things again and believe you me this um, everything about this clock is massive and heavy. This is the just the trunk and um, as you can see I haven't got the clock completely assembled because it, it that, that's the ceiling um, so the top of the clock is off at the minute there's this enormous case I mean this is just absolutely huge here's the inside of it nice bevel glass door quite a simple um, design I have a feeling this case has probably been hand uh, made and is not original to the clock. I think the movement has needed a large case and for whatever reason the original case has gone missing too large or it was damaged and somebody's a long time ago probably in the 1920s or 1930s has made this mahogany sort of strong box for it more than a clock case but that's the um, trunk of the clock. Here are the very tarnished weights. Um, this is the largest one. I mean, this is enormous. And I, I can't even lift that off the table with one hand. And I, I couldn't anyway with my bad back at the moment. Um, I think this one is then the strike because it's a slightly smaller one. And then the medium one is the one for the, the, the time, which I assume is why it's got this different coloured um, hook on or eye for the hook to go on. What really gives you the sense of how large this clock is, is the tubular bells. As you can see, the um, the nickel coating is wearing off these. Um, but I can re sort of silver these things. And the, the, the largest strike tube here, which is this one, is six foot four. So I've barely got it off the floor here. But it's about six foot four, that that hour strike tube. It's only a uh, five tubular bells, so Westminster only. Not as fancy as a nine, but these are incredibly long, incredibly large tubular bells. I can give a rundown, so. So that's the Westminster chime bits. And I'll just, they resonate for quite a long time. And then the hour on this very large six foot four pipe. And I think that resonates for absolutely ages. So these will need a, sort of a replating um, so that they look nice and silver again in that cabinet. As you see, this thing is still resonating. So let's wander off while well, that's still resonating. <laughs> let's wander off and have a look at the pendulum. This is the pendulum on the piano here. Again, this all wants polishing up again. Um, enormously heavy. I mean, really, really heavy. And look at the size of the thing. It's broken the suspension at the top here. So it needs a new bit of spring. And this is the actual front of the clock. As I say, this is a sort of a handmade or, or top cabinet. I mean, these look a bit sort of naff, really. Um, but that shows you the movement. And then, I mean, this thing is an enormous cupboard in itself. And there's the face. The bracket to hang the chimes up is actually inside the hood of the clock. I say, and this hood doesn't slide off, it actually lifts off. Um, the door here, so you can see inside the movement. So here's the, bra the bracket that the, the pipes hang off of, the tubular bells hang off, and as you can see, the um, it's a bit dark, but the pulleys are on the inside. I, I haven't taken the, the movement out. Here is the actual hammers that will strike the tubular bells. So 
sort of one will hang there, hang there, hang there, and hang there. And you can see the, the, the leather covering uh, that should be wrapped around the ends of the wood here has been removed. So at some stage somebody's thought this is um, too quiet or whatever and, and all the leather has worn off and come away. But um, there's the, the owl one there. But this should be covered in a little chamois. So that will have to be put back. If you hit the uh, tubular bells with just the wood, it will sound far too harsh. So that they'll have to be recovered. The clock was actually running um, when I got this of the chap I bought it off. Um, you can see here with this arrangement, this sort of pin barrel arrangement they've got here, you can see that they would have been able to put another um, barrel here um, or two to get to, to, to turn it into a um, an eight or nine tube striking chiming tubular bell clock by just adding the extra barrels on here without changing too much of the movement. I don't know who makes the movement. Um, it's got two fans to adjust the speed of the chime and the strike, which most of these tubular chime clocks have. It's a very big movement. I think I should be able to tip it forward slightly to have a, a better look and get the light in there. I shall do a much better video of this once um, I get the, get the thing out of the cabinet. But um, yes, that's the, the project that will next be underway once I've... Uh, my back is healed, so I just thought I'd show you what it looked like before any work's been done on it. And as you can see, it's a pretty big thing, and should sound quite good when it's done. Um, I'll see if I can get some different kind of mouldings or something from this. The thing deserves to have a new, a new cabinet made for it, really. And but I mean, this is actually this is a nice solid bits of mahogany um, but I think uh, I think we can probably do a, a better job if I remove these and put nicer carvings on the corners I think it'll look much nicer but some um, somebody's obviously saved the movement and put it in a, a their own made case or perhaps they ordered the movement many years ago you could probably buy the movement on its own and build your own cabinet and that's the cabinet they made um, not a bad cabinet. Has to be huge to to house that um, six foot four length tube, um, and of course that has to hang a bit lower because the the hammer that strikes the tube is down here, whereas the hammer that plays the melodies are about this level, and the bell the the the, the hour striking hammer is about is down here. So a little bit of work, but at least the clock actually runs. There's nothing missing. Um, or damaged from the movement point of view, but just wants all sorting out properly. Um, plenty of room in here to adjust these hammers. As you can see, they're not not very well aligned to where the tubular bells go, so they will all need to be realigned and have new leather on them. Yes, hopefully in the next video, be um, either the clock running or a little bit more progress made.